Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn the fourth topic in SK015 chemistry called chemical bonding. Although there are five subtopics in this chapter, but I want to highlight the first three subtopics 4.1, 4.2 and 4.3 that will work closely together before we get started. The name of this chapter itself already tells you what you will learn, chemical bonds. But we really will go deeper about how this bond is formed apart from their definitions. So to form a bond, you need to know how each element is represented. So you must first know how to draw your Lewis structure. So Lewis structure have two representations, either dot or cross symbol of valence electrons. We have already learned this in high school. The Lewis structure only gives you the two dimensional representations of a molecule. So to see this structure in three dimensional, you are going to apply the VESPER theory. So VESPER stands for valence shell electron pair repulsions to finally know the geometry of a molecule. So you will learn molecular geometry in subtopic number two. And then from the 3D structure, you get to know the polarity of a molecule. This polarity of a molecule is useful to determine the type of molecules to be formed, either polar or nonpolar, and then chemical properties of a molecule such as boiling point and solubility, which we will talk more in subtopic 4.4. The molecular geometries uh, in 4.2 only tells you how atoms are arranged in a molecule, but valence bond theory in 4.3 tells you how a covalent bond is formed by illustrating shape of atomic orbitals we have learned in chapter 2. So we have learned S orbital got spherical shape and P orbitals got dumbbell shape with the considerations of electron-electron repulsions that give rise to their molecular geometry. So this theory can be illustrated by orbital overlapping and hybridization. So we will do a bit of drawing in subtopic 4.3. In this chapter, you will be introduced to three types of chemical bonds which are first, ionic bond, where electron is transferred to form attractive electrostatic forces between positive and negative ions. So transferring of electrons here may involve losing and gaining of electrons. And then we have covalent bond. Instead of transferring electrons, atoms will share their electrons to form electrostatic forces between them. And lastly, metallic bond. Metallic bond is where positively charged metal ions and the sea of delocalized valence electrons form an electrostatic attraction between them. So between these three chemical bonds, only the two ionic bond and covalent bond will be covered in this subtopic, while metallic bond will have its own subtopic 4.5. Now we know we have three types of chemical bond. How are we going to form these bonds? So obviously, you will need more than one element with valence electrons on it. We are now going to look at how valence electrons on each element be represented. Lewis structure is the valence electrons of main group elements represented as dots or cross signs surrounding the symbol of the element. For example, we have chlorine. So chlorine is located at period 3, group 17. We are interested only on the valence electrons, means there should be 7 electrons surrounding this chlorine. So how to assign the dot? Just like the rule you apply in assigning the electrons in orbital, they should be first distributed singly before pairing out, like this. So, Shown below the Lewis dot symbol of elements in period 2 and 3. So if you could look here, in group 1, we have only one valence electron. That's why we have only one dot. If we look at this group 18, since the valence electron consists of 2 comes from S orbital and 6 comes from P orbital, therefore they're going to have all 8 electrons surrounding this element. When atoms have fewer than 8 electrons, they tend to react and form a more stable compound via losing or gaining or sharing of electrons. In other words, they have to obey this rule called octet rule so they can participate in the bond formations. So this rule works mainly for period 2 elements. 
how this octet rule is applied. So let's form a bond between magnesium atom and fluorine atom. So magnesium with configurations of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2 has two valence electrons, while fluorine with configurations of 1s2, 2s2, 2p5 has seven valence electrons. So combinations of metal and non-metal element here will form ionic bond, where the transferring of electrons takes place. The transferring of electrons here will rely on the octet rule. But if you could see, both of these elements haven't got 8 electrons at their valence shell. So how do we know this? Look at the valence shell for magnesium. We have n equal to 3. We got only 2 electrons on this s orbital. That's why we have 2 dots, 1 and 2. As for fluorine, at the valence shell, we got only 2 plus 5 means 7. That's why there are only 7 dots in your fluorine. To achieve the 8 electrons at their valence shell, this magnesium will give out the 2 electrons to fluorine and the fluorine will accept 1 electron because they got only 1 electrons deficit. But then, single fluorine atom needed only 1 electrons. If 2 electrons will be given, means we need to add another fluorine atom. So, 1 electron will be transferred to each fluorine atom forming ionic bond of Mg2 plus 2F minus. So if you got ionic bond, you must make sure that they are close to one another. Don't put plus sign in here. Since formations of a bond require ions to be formed, there are three types of stability of ions you need to know. So this stability is based on their valence electronic configurations. If the ion has valence electronic configurations of Ns2 and P6, they are called noble gas configurations. For Ns2, Np6 and D10, they are called pseudo noble gas configurations. And the last one, if you have Ns2, Np6 and D5, the type of stability is half filled configurations. Now we will go through the type of bonds to be formed. First is ionic bond. It is a type of bond that holds the metal and non-metal atoms. So how are they connected? Via electrostatic attractions by first each having opposite electrical charge. So we have positive and negative ions in here. So to get to this charge, they must transfer electrons by losing or gaining electrons. So let's look at the step we have to go forming an ionic bond. We will use previous example between magnesium and fluorine. Magnesium atom transfer two of its valence electrons to fluorine and forms magnesium ion Mg2+. While the two fluorine atoms accept one electron each from magnesium and forms two fluorine ions to F-. Since we have opposite charge of ions now, Mg2+, and F-, they are going to attract one another, so the attractive electrostatic forces between Mg2 plus and F minus forms ionic bond. Second is covalent bond. It is a type of bond that holds the non-metal atoms via sharing of electrons. So from the example, we have fluorine atoms. Both are non-metal because they are located on the far right of periodic table. So each fluorine atom has less one electron to obey the octet rule. So one covalent bond consists of two electrons. So these two will share each of their electron, hence forming electrostatic forces called covalent bond. So the shared electrons now is localized between the two fluorine atoms like these. We have two electrons in here, two electrons in a covalent bond. There is another bond considered as covalent bond, still sharing of electrons, but the way the electrons are shared is a bit different. So this bond has two names. Sometimes they are called coordinate covalent bond, sometimes covalent dative bond. Both are the same. Sharing of electrons in this dative bond involves only one atom that donate both electrons. We're going to look at two different examples that portray the formations of this bond. First, ammonium ion. So we are going to form ion NH4 plus from the reactions between ammonia molecule NH3 and hydrogen ion H plus. If we count the number of electrons surrounding both species, we could see hydrogen atom initially has one electron, but since it has now become a plus charge, means zero electron on it. 
Well, for ammonia molecule, which is neutral with zero charge, there are three covalent bonds surrounding the nitrogen atom, with each bond consists of two electrons, so three times two, altogether six electrons comes from the bonding pair. Since ammonia got another electron here, we call it as lone pair, so this lone pair consists of one and two electrons, so six plus two, we have eight electrons surrounding the nitrogen atom on ammonia molecule. So between this lone pair and also the bonding pair, lone pair is much more reactive than the bonding pair. Therefore, this electron will be the one to be donated or to be react with other species. Since the ammonia molecule now got eight electrons around it, so we are going to donate this lone pair to the hydrogen ion. And once electrons are shared, ammonia is no longer zero charge. Instead, it has become plus one charge and the bond form here is called coordinate covalent bond. So the covalent bond form is coordinated to the species with electron deficit, which in this case, the hydrogen. So if we check the number of electrons surrounds nitrogen and hydrogen, we could see this nitrogen got two, four, six, eight, so eight electrons, so octet. For hydrogen, since it got these a bond, so two electrons, so it achieved duplet. Second example involves ammonia molecule NH3 and boron trifluoride BF3. So this is one of the rare cases where metal boron react with non-metal nitrogen to form a type of covalent bond. So you will be learning on these rare cases afterwards, but for now, let's define it as incomplete octet due to the number of electrons surrounding the atom is less than eight electrons. So you could see there are three covalent bond on BF3 contributes to six electrons. While for NH3, we have already done this. We know that this NH3 got two, four, six, seven, and eight, so eight electrons. As you can see, there is one blank spot on boron trifluoride, so means this boron trifluoride is able to form another bond in here to finally has eight electrons around it. So how can this be done? This can be done by forming a dative bond with ammonia with lone pair that is much reactive compared to the covalent bond in here, the bonding pair. So this nitrogen with lone pair on it will share its electron to boron and form a dative bond. So this arrow pointing this boron indicates species that accept the electrons. So if we do the checking, both of these central atom will now have eight electrons around them. So we have two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. Thank you for your attention. Stay tuned for the next video still covering for subtopic 4.1 on how to draw the Lewis structure for a covalent molecule. Goodbye.